Welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church in East Berlin. It's nice to have you with us here for worship today. This service, in all transparency, is being filmed on a Wednesday afternoon in January, and we are well aware that it will be used during a time when we either have a snow or ice storm or some sort of horrendous video problem um, where we can't live stream. So we aren't really sure when we will worship with you using this liturgy, but please know that you are welcome. If you have any questions, um, if you'd like to become a part of our community, or if you have the need to know of any of our announcements, um, which we won't have in this video, then please feel free to call our church office at any time, knowing you are welcome here. It's 717-259-9125. We look forward to hearing from you. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude. worship using the brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name amen almighty god in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the church of christ and by his authority 
I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now let us sing together hymn number 873, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. So with you let us pray lord god you showed your glory and led many to faith by the strength of your promise and the works of your son as you have brought gladness and healing to your people 
Grant us these same gifts and lead us also to perfect, to perfect faith in your sovereignty. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson today comes from the sixth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you, so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children, and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to you, a land with fine, large cities that you did not build, houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill, hewn cisterns that you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you have eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of thy May the Lord remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant your heart's desire and prosper all your plans. We will shout for joy at your victory and unfurl our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to the anointed one. God will answer out of the holy heaven gaining victory with a strong right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we rely on the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall down, but we will arise and stand upright. O Lord, give victory to the King and answer us when we call. Here ends the psalm. The second lesson is from the fourth chapter of Philippians. St. Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Welcome, young folks. We're counting everyone as a young folk for our children's time today on our video service. I want to ask a question. Were you paying attention when I read the lessons? No? Maybe not. I'm going to talk about the Old Testament lesson. And I'm going to teach you about something that's a really important piece of that scripture for all the Jewish people. And it was very important for Jesus himself. And that's something called the Shema. Oops. I don't know if that's showing up okay on the camera. It's S-H-E-M-A, and it's pronounced like Shema. And it's kind of like the creed for the Jewish people, and it comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. And I'm going to read it to you again, just that portion. Listen and see if this sounds a little bit like our Apostles' Creed but just talking about God in general. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. We heard that in our Old Testament lesson today, and it's a very important command, just like our belief in the creed all of the Israelites learned and heard and confessed, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. That's really the first commandment. And then all of this command, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. That follows up in the commandments with all of what we're doing wrapped up in that one sentence. So we do all of the Ten Commandments and what we're doing is loving God and each other. And Jesus teaches us that this is a very important commandment. So Jesus would have known the Shema. He would have been familiar with Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 9 and he would have practiced it. Now, I want to show you some cool stuff. You know, the scripture tells us that we should recite this to our children and teach it to them and teach it to our children's children and also to bind them as a sign on our hands 
and fix them as an emblem on our foreheads and write them on the doorposts of our houses. So here I have it written in smaller print and we're gonna make a little scroll out of it because that's what folks do when they're practicing Judaism and they're following this command with this scripture, which is a wonderful reminder of who God is and how God is with them all the time. They'd make a little scroll like this, some even tinier, some itty bitty minuscule. And they would bind this on their hands or on their foreheads or on the doorpost, like in the doorway here, out into the narthex from our worship space. They would bind it as a reminder that the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. So these little scrolls are reminders of their faith. And that's why I said this reminds us of the creed, because this is really a recitation or a remembering of the faith of the Jewish people. And so I want to show you this. And we'll have to get closer to the camera for you to see this really well. We'll take some pictures. This is called a mezuzah. And it's something that you can see here maybe. There are spots to put two screws on the top and the bottom. And this would be screwed onto the doorpost of the house with this little scroll inside of it. And as people go in the house and out of the house, they touch their mezuzah as a way of blessing to remind themselves that the Lord is God. And then this is called tefillin. And it's harder to see in this picture, but here's an example of a person's hand on top of this book in the picture. And strapped with some leather straps is a box with a scroll of the Shema inside. And then here's a drawing picture of a tefillin, which is the box, with a man praying who has it strapped on his forehead, like the command says. So Jesus would have been familiar with this practice and with this commandment, which is the most important commandment in the faith. Now, why am I telling you all this about the Jewish faith? Well, it was today's scripture, but also this is very important for us because in the Gospels, somebody asks Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And what does Jesus say? Jesus has the answer. He tells the man, you are right. The greatest commandment is, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And then Jesus tells us a second part. He says, and the second is like it. That's when he says that you should love others as you love yourself. And so Jesus teaches us this. And he teaches us that with that same love that we get from God, we are to love God and love one another. So it's pretty exciting. It's pretty cool. And I bet if you have more questions about the Shema, Remember, S-H-E-M-A, or Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, you could Google it, and you would learn a whole bunch. There are some cool YouTube videos about how this is practiced in Judaism, and about how it relates to our faith that Jesus, who was Jewish, taught us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, our God. You are indeed Lord alone. And we love you, Lord, with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our might. Help us to follow this command and to understand that you are truly the one we can turn to no matter when we're having a struggle, no matter what we're rejoicing about and even when we're just bored. Help us to remember that your love for us never changes, 
and that we are to love you in return. Help us to remember that as Jesus taught us, we are to also love others in the same way. Strengthen us in our faith and help us remember that this promise never wavers. Amen. So Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Jesus also said, up here in verse 39, do not resist an evildoer. Well, what if my neighbor and my enemy are the same, and he's a six-year-old evildoer in my neighborhood? Let me tell you a story about my cat. I have a kitty cat. We have three actually, but I just want to talk about Mr. Boots. Mr. Boots is going on 11. He's a black cat with white tuxedo markings, thus the, the name Boots because he has white feet. Could have been socks, I guess. Could have been more creative a long time ago and named him whatever, but he was a stray when we lived in the parsonage at Bender's Lutheran Church in Biglerville. Boots has been with us since October of 2012. So it is going on 10 years. And he was about full grown when we found him. We brought him in, gave him food, shelter, all that stuff. He's been our cat for a good while. Moved with us when we moved to Heidelbergsburg in 2016. And we're hoping he moves well with us back into Biglerville when we move sometime this winter. But I went home from here at Trinity one afternoon in the fall. And often when I pull in and Boots hears my car, he comes running. And he knows the sound of my car. And he knows that when he gets there, before I have the car turned off, I will fling wide the door, he jumps in, he walks across my dashboard, he does all the purring, and I do all the chin rubbing with my thumbs, and together we go into the house, and I open a can of food for him. It's our routine. It doesn't happen every day, but it happens most days. Well, this particular day is when I met my enemy. I don't know this kid's name, but I know he's really cute. He's got puffy curly hair, and he has an older sister. And on this particular day, I pulled into our drive, I saw Boots coming down the sidewalk, and you can't miss him, because he runs when he hears the car, and his fat belly sways from side to side. And he talks, he meows, obviously, because that's cat language, but he also makes these squeaky weird sounds. He just, he's a vocal dude. So I opened my car door and I heard before Boots even got to me, I heard from up the sidewalk, this little enemy of mine saying, Oreo, Oreo, where are you going? Oreo, come back here. And I said, Oreo? And this little kid yells, yeah, that's my new kitty. His name is Oreo. And I said, that's my old kitty. His name is Boots. The little evildoer had stolen my cat. And my cute little friendly neighbor had become my enemy. I bristled a little, I have to admit. In all of my 51 years, I hadn't turned 52 yet. In all of my 51 years, I turned into an absolute child and I thought to myself, listen kid, that is my cat. You will not take him from me. But that is not what happened. What happened is I learned from the little boy whose name I don't even know, whose sister was riding along with him. I learned that he comes into their house and he eats and he jumps up on the couch and he takes a bath and he makes a circle with his little fluffy body, and he takes a nap. And I learned that my little neighbor enemy 
wants to sleep with boots. And that his mom says, he can't because she doesn't know if he has all his shots. And so in my little bristling, in the meantime, while I'm conversing with the young man and his slightly older sister, both on their bicycles, Oreo has done what he always does. He is in my car, he is on the dashboard, he is purring and headbutting my hands like this so that I can rub his cheeks with my thumbs. And the little boy acknowledges that I know his cat. And I said, my old kitty's name is Boots. I tell him the story about how we used to live in the country and how we found Boots. And Boots came in and Boots has lived with us for nearly 10 years. And the little boy confesses that he's not even 10 years old, he's only six. And he doesn't know that this cat is old. He thinks this cat is young, this cat is new. And so out of my mouth, instead of the resistance that I'm feeling in my heart, like, this is my kitty, go away, little boy. I said, he has all his shots. You can let your mom know it's safe for him to sleep on your bed. And I thought, what have I done? What have I done but give away my cat? Which I didn't really. I mean, I know the little boy will go home, say to his mom, at least I hope that he did, oh, he belongs to somebody who lives over on that street and his name is Boots and he's not young and he has all his shots. I'm sure, given the way he was a talker, that his mom heard the whole story and that she probably said to him, Sorry, honey, he's not your new kitty. Because Boots has consistently still lived with us. So I don't, from that episode, have a great worry. But I thought of this and actually talked to Andy Geyer about this when she was helping me to film this service. I thought of this story because of what Jesus says. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Do not resist an evildoer. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give also your cloak. And if anyone forces you to go a mile, go the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you and don't refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. So in my heart, I named my little six-year-old neighbor my enemy. I called him an evildoer for loving my cat in my head. Little turkey, cat thief. That's what I think when I see him go by. But Jesus teaches us a lesson about those kinds of reactions. Jesus teaches us that we're to love our enemies, that we're to pray for those who persecute us. He says this makes us children of the Father. And he reminds us that the Father shines the sun on the good and the evil. The Father sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Jesus says there's no reward in only loving those who love you. And he tells us to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. So no pressure, no, no pressure at all there to get it all right, to stretch as far as you can stretch in loving people who rile you or harm you. Now, this is not an excuse to accept abuse. Let me say that as absolutely clearly as I possibly can. Because Jesus would not say, turn the other cheek till you land in the hospital. That is not what this passage is about. Even though it's been used that way for years. 
Jesus instead says, see the humanity, see the intention, see the whole person beyond and behind what has caused us to bristle or caused us to assume or caused us to wonder about one another and stretch. Forgive the sins they commit and stretch. Value relationship over being right and stretch. Jesus doesn't say put up with wrongdoing over and over and over again. But he says in the course of daily life, with those with whom you have relationship, both your enemy and your neighbor, give them a chance. Love where you might not love. Forgive where you might not forgive. Give. Where you, shouldn't, where you certainly wouldn't think of doing so. Be the one who loves when no one else does. Be the one who cares when it doesn't seem like anyone will. This is a rough scripture in some ways because it really, really calls us to examine ourselves. It really, really calls us to question what it is we assume and what it is we project. You know, in my little example about my cat and the kid who lives one street over who has stolen him, my immediate reaction was, why didn't you pay attention to the fact that he's fat and healthy and shiny and friendly and assume he belonged to someone? I initially went to snarky and wanted to point it at a six-year-old. That's what Jesus says don't do. That's the kind of perfect we're supposed to be. The kind of perfect that gives the other person a chance. That little boy left my yard really excited that he could sleep with his, my, new, old cat because he had his shots. I don't know what made me say that to that little boy, but what I wanted to say is, go home. I don't know. But I do know that when we see one another with righteousness and grace, when we give one another a chance, relationship is built. I watched for this kid. I only saw him one other time. It's very likely that he's young enough that his mom said, you don't go over on that other street even if you are following the cat. Because he doesn't live on our street, he lives a street over. But I watch for him. I watch for him because I want to build that relationship. I don't want to give him my cat, but I want him to know that through the cat, we are connected. We live in the same neighborhood. There's no reason we can't smile and laugh and talk about how my rotten cat is a bum. It would make my day, and I know it would make the day of that little boy who cares about the cat. That's the kind of perfect Jesus directs us to. Where relationship is built. Because we see the light of God, the image of God reflected in one another. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Because relationship in the name of the Lord is always, always worth. And now let's sing together our hymn of the day, For the Beauty of the Earth.
Now let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for the many ways in which you support the ministries and operational costs of our life together in faith here at Trinity. Your participation in our shared journey is invaluable and gives glory to God. Thank you. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction so that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, hear our prayer. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policymakers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace, hear our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day, especially those on our prayer lists, and those we name before you now. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. You see us for who we are, and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transition. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for all who have modeled the way of courageous faith, especially those we name before you now. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.